right now I want to go over this worksheet. And so the one that says nomenclature on it. Uh, and uh, though I already see a typo on this first one, that should be AL2, S3, but that's okay. Um, and to go over this worksheet, I actually have the answers already written on a separate sheet, and I'm just going to go over some random ones, of course, ask you what the answers are. And then I'll just put up all the answers for the rest of, say, like 1 through 18. So uh, let's go over this. Let's say, hey, let's name the following. What is, I'm going to just circle some random ones. Like, I want to name that one. Let's also name um, this one, uh, that one, and this one. Okay, let's just name those four. Okay, so to name this thing, CA, calcium. It's a metal. And it's not a transition metal, so it'll just be calcium. CL is chloride. Its name is calcium chloride. That's it. And for those like, wait, shouldn't it be dichloride? Remember, if there's a metal in it, there's a metal in it, it's ionic. We do not put prefixes. So it's just calcium chloride. Next one, NaI. Na is sodium. I is iodide. Sodium is not a transition metal, just sodium iodide. Done. This one here, Ba is barium. That's barium. Barium is a metal. It's actually, first of all, it even, I just realized it says it's ionic, so you don't even have to worry about um, about their uh, being molecular because they're all ionic. It says so. Um, and barium is not a transition metal, so I don't need to put the charge. Uh, I is iodide. Ca is calcium. O is oxide. And that's how we write the formulas of these. Uh, let me put up the rest of those answers. Here's 1 through 18 again. Um, I didn't choose 6, 8, uh, 16, or 18, but notice uh, silver 1, zinc 2, cadmium 2. Uh, those are transition metals. If there's a transition metal, then we have to put the charging. So even though I didn't select those um, to go over specifically right now. Okay, so check the answers that you have for the rest of them, or you can just pause. Okay, going on, let's just do some random ones for these, um, 19 through 30. And I'm just going to randomly choose, I don't know, let's say 21, 27, um, 24. Let's go through those three right now. Okay, to do the stuff, you need to know the charges. Potassium is K, its charge is positive 1. Sulfur is S, so, uh, its charge is negative 2. Positive 1, negative 2 does not add up to 0. But if I had two potassiums, K2S, that would be the ionic compound from potassium and sulfur. Normally, we also don't write in the charges. I would you would probably erase that positive one and a negative two, but I'm writing in pen. And you actually can leave them in, it's just usually we leave them out. Number 27, aluminum is Al, is charge is positive three. Nitrogen is N, is charge is negative three. Actually, I think that's it. Positive three, negative three, we're done. That adds up to zero. So just ALN. Number 24, cesium. Cesium is Cs, and the charge of cesium um, is positive 1, like all alkali metals. Sulfur is S, is charge is minus 2. Positive 1, negative 2, I need 2 cesium, so there should be Cs2s. So that's the answers uh, for those three. Let me put up the rest of them. Again, I have this already done. Here are the rest of them. Potassium, positive 1. Iodine, negative 1. Just 1 to 1. Uh, zinc, positive 2. Bromine, negative 1. So Z and Br2. Um, I wrote, again, the charges in pink here. But, again, normally we don't write in the charges. So, it, like, sodium, sulfur, Na2S. Sodium, positive 1. Sulfur, negative 2. Okay, so check the rest of the answers. You might need to pause, because I'm going to go on.
Okay, question number 31 to 39 or 40. Uh, the, what Name the following things that uh, contain D block elements. I know we haven't learned that term D block elements yet. D block elements, this came from somewhere else, is a fancy way of saying transition metals. Okay, so they all contain transition metals. So let's just start with that. These all contain transition metals. Okay, so let's do 35, let's do 36, just because I felt like those. Okay, first of all, it says they, are, they contain transition metals, but um, normally you would look them up on a periodic table to see it's a transition metal. Okay, CO is cobalt. It contains a transition metal, so I have to put in parentheses its charge, and F is fluoride. And so I need to figure out the charge of that uh, fluoride. Okay, um, so I'm going to actually write it bigger down here. Fluoride is negative one. Fluoride is negative one. And I have three negative ones. Therefore, the cobalt's charge has to be positive three. Cobalt three fluoride is the name of COF3. For number 36, CuBr2. Cu is copper. It's a transition metal, so I'll have to put the charge in parentheses. Br is called bromide. For space reasons, I'm going to do the work here. CuBr2. Bromide is negative one charge. I have two negative ones. So the copper's charge has to be positive two. This will be known as copper 2 bromide. Okay, let me put up the answers for uh, up to number 40. Here are my answers for 31 through 40. And I kind of put the charges, even though some was a little blurry, um, above. Okay, so check your answers for that. You might need to pause. Okay, going on, 41 through 50. Let's go over random problems like, um, let's do 42, let's do 47. Um, notice on here the work, you don't have to look up the charge. This is given. It says iron's positive three. Why? I don't know, it says so. So first negative two. Remember it has to add up to zero. This thing needs to add up to zero. So the least common multiple between 3 and 2 is 6. If I have two positive 3s for 6 for iron, 3 sulfides, 3 negative 2, that's negative 6. Iron is a trans transition metal. So this thing will be called iron. Its charge is 3. S is sulfide. Iron 3 sulfide. Okay. Next one, 47. Actually, I'm going to write the name of it first. V is vanadium, and it's a transition metal. I already know its charge. It tells me it's positive 2. Vanadium 2, F is fluoride. So it's vanadium 2 fluoride's name. Oh, by the way, this thing says write the formula and the name. So that's why it's two separate, two separate things for each of these. Okay. But vanadium is positive 2. Fluoride is negative 1. Positive 2, I need two negative ones. VF2 is the formula of vanadium fluoride. Let me put up the answers for 41 through 50. Here's my answers for 41 through 50. Um, that says copper 1, I made a mistake. Copper 1 oxide for the first one. And so those two I put in the wrong area. Okay, so check your answers for. Uh, questions numbers 41 through 50. Going on, number 51 through 60. 51 through 60. Name the following compounds. Uh, let's just do 51, 52. Okay. So let's just do those two. Uh, remember, they're, they're ionic compounds 
They contain polyatomic ions. Polyatomic means there's more than one atom ions there. Na is called sodium. Sodium is not a transition metal, so I do not need to put any charges. MnO4 is called the permanganate ion. Permanganate. I think I spelled it wrong, but whatever. Permanganate. Okay, G-A-N-A-T-E. Okay, permanganate. Permanganate ion. So that's on the list of ions. I don't have a copy of that list of ions on me right now, but it's the permanganate ion. Ba is called the barium ion. OH is one of the polyatomic ions called the hydroxide ion. Barium hydroxide is number 52. Let me put up the answers for the rest of those. 51 to 50 or 51 to 58. Here they are. Sodium permanganate, 52 barium hydroxide, 53 ammonium nitrate. That should say nitrate. Uh, 54 iron 2 nitrate. Notice iron is here. It's a transition metal. We must state its charge in Roman numerals. Next one, calcium nitrate, potassium uh, sulfite, uh, sodium acetate. This thing is written CH3COO. Um, in the table, I think it's C2H3O2. Um, C2H3O2. Yeah, that's an acetate ion on the table. Uh, this thing is lithium nitrate. So that's this side. Then let's look at, there's yet another side to this thing. Oh, good. It's not that much longer. Well, it's not that much shorter either. Okay. So next side, 59 through uh, 70. Write the formula of the following. Okay. So let's just write, uh, let's say 63, 60, and 64. Just, I don't know. I'm just randomly picking. Okay, 63, um, we're writing formula sodium sulfate. Sodium is Na, it's positive 1. Sulfate is SO4, it's charge is negative 2. Positive 1, negative 2 doesn't add up to 0, but Na2, SO4 does. Copper 2 sulfate, copper 2 sulfate. Copper is positive 2, that's what copper 2 means. Sulfate is SO4, it's charge is negative 2. Actually, that's it. Positive 2, negative 2 adds up to 0. Just a reminder, this is not 4, negative 2. SO4, the entire SO4 is called sulfate. The entire SO4 is negative 2. So positive 2, negative 2 adds up to 0. Sodium is Na+. Phosphate is PO4, is charge is negative 3. Oh, by the way, how do I even know PO4, negative 3 is phosphate? Because eventually you'll just got to memorize stuff like that. But it is on a table for now. One positive one, one negative three. I need three of these sodiums. Na3PO4 is sodium phosphate. It's not necessary to put the phosphate in parentheses, but you can. It's not incorrect if you did. So let me put up the answer for um, 59 to 70. 59 to 70. Here it is. Here's the rest of them. Um, so you can pause the video to check your answer as necessary. Okay, now I'm going to go on. Number 71 to 80, I believe. Name the following. Ooh, keyword here, molecular. It's given that they're molecular, but it will not be necessarily given that they're molecular on the test. How in the world would I know it's molecular? Everything on here, oh, well... Actually, I like most of them on here are uh, non-metals. Um, and so, but let's do, say, for instance, 73. Let's do uh, 76. So B is boron. Three fluorines, trifluoride. Boron trifluoride. What's that say? P2O3. P2 is diphosphorus trioxide. Trick, I didn't write this. Look at 79. Mn is metal. It's not molecular. I didn't write this thing. 
So this is not even molecular, it's ionic. Manganese is a metal, and manganese is a transition metal, so if I did this, I need to figure out, well, chloride's negative 1, therefore manganese is positive 3, and this would be manganese 3, that's a 3, chloride. Okay. I didn't write this, uh, they're kind of tricking you by putting metals in this. In fact, 78, 79, 80 have metals in them. And again, I didn't write the thing, so there's metals in this stuff. Okay, but putting up the answers for 71 through 80, here they are. And again, sorry, I didn't write this thing. Trick question uh, for 78, 79, 80. They have metals in them. Metals, um, we, there are metals in it makes it automatically ionic. But everything else, you just say, hey, two nitrogens, one oxygen, one, one silicon, two oxygens, and so forth. So check your answers, 71 to 80, though 78, 79, 80 are trick questions. They're not molecular. Going on, 81 to 90, write the formulas of these things. Though uh, that, I assume, is trifluoride. Okay, spelled wrong, not trifluoride. There's no such thing. Assume they meant trifluoride. Okay, these are kind of easy. Diphosphorus, di means two, so two phosphoruses. Uh, trioxide means three oxygens. Okay, let's just, I'll do 85 now. Let's do 84, 85, eh, 84, 85, 86. Well, I'm going to do those, and I'll put up the rest of the answers. Carbon is C. Tetrafluoride. Fluoride is F. Tetra means there's four of them. Sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur is S. Fluoride is F. Hexa means there's six of them. The prefix hexa means six. Dinitrogen means two nitrogens. Pentoxide. Penta is five oxygens, N2O5. And the rest of the answers are right there. Okay, so this is a slightly more complicated worksheet with lots of problems on it, obviously, where you have a combination of ionic and molecular. Um, okay, and so that's that worksheet, great.